Hello everyone. Okay, thank you. <laughs> okay, welcome back to the session electromagnetic wave. Yes, nice. And uh, this today we are going to learn uh, lecture number five. And already previous four lectures completed. This is the fifth lecture, and this lecture will be helpful for the student those are preparing for board and CBSE board examination and different boards. And also it will be helpful for the students those are preparing for competitive examination like NEET and J. So this video I will be very helpful. So don't uh, miss that video. So let us start the class without delay. So okay children, in the previous class we learned about so many terminologies uh, like uh, energy density of electromagnetic wave and the transverse nature of electromagnetic wave. So today, uh, before going to start the class, let us uh, recapitulate the things what we learned in the previous class. So, <laughs> okay, so here, this is the electromagnetic wave, it is coming <laughs> from sun, because sun is the source of energy. Yes, nice. So, all of you know that electromagnetic induction, electromagnetic wave, okay, electromagnetic wave carry energy as they are traveling in the space and remember that wherever there is electric field and magnetic field electromagnetic wave i mean energy will be there so i have mentioned here for you so the energy density of an electromagnetic wave is the energy per in unit volume per unit area and per unit time so these are the things of course we discussed in the last class so once again, I want to uh, take you to my uh, screen now. So the energy stored in the space where electric and magnetic fields are present. So in free space, the energy density of static, static electric field. So in the language of electric field, it is coming how much? UE, energy density, means energy per unit volume is half epsilon naught E square and if you are expressing in the language of magnetic field it is coming how much half b square by mu naught and you know all of you what is epsilon naught and mu naught permittivity and permeability in the free space and here one thing you see that this electric field and magnetic field so this electric field and this magnetic field these are not constant at all so in the space uh, with respect to time and space their value continuously changes so then which value will be taking here so we can take its rms value anyway so if you are asking the total energy density of static electric and magnetic field and that will be what that will be the sum of uh, energy density in the language of electric field and energy density in the language of magnetic field which is equal to half epsilon naught e square and half b square by mu naught but this e and this b these values are not constant as i told you so since these values are not constant so continuously these values are changed so then we can take two things either we can take rms value or we can take average value so if you are taking rms value the final expression and if you are taking average value also final expression will be same so let me show you so uh, rms value of electric field and rms value of magnetic field so you can see here so the average energy density u in electromagnetic wave can be obtained by placing uh, E and B, electric field and magnetic field, magnetic field by their RMS value. So then if I want to express the equation, you can see here, now this average value, it is now in the form of RMS value. Now your question will be there. Sir, we don't want RMS value. We want peak value only. Okay, if you want peak value, you can take. So in alternating current, we learned that what we learned? IRMS. 
I RMS equal to just one minute what happened to my pointer so I RMS nice <laughs> I RMS equal to what I not by root 2 in alternating current we studied similarly E RMS is what E not by root 2 and B RMS is what B not by root 2 and the same thing I want to show you here so then if you are exp expressing in the form of uh, RMS value uh, in the form of peak value then you can see here this E RMS is converted to E not by root 2 and B RMS is converted to uh, B not by root 2 so when the, both the values we are uh, putting there so then how much it will be coming in place of in place of uh, RMS value we put uh, peak value and the peak value is uh, in front of your skin you can see here this is uh, a peak value and that is also peak value you can see there so this is the expression and now this is one of the very important question as I have mentioned here so in your CBAC board examination or any board examination the question will come show that show that okay so that the average value in the language of in the form of electric field is equal to average value in the form of magnetic field like constant average value okay average density average energy density so if you start from a left hand side yes because of my head you cannot see <laughs> okay anyway so if you take left hand side Okay, all of you listen very carefully. This is one of the important question. Okay, note down please. Left hand side. So you know average density <laughs> electric field in the language of electric field 1 by 4 epsilon naught E naught square. And all of you know that what is that E naught equal to C into B naught. So in place of E naught, if I enter C into B naught. You can see here and finally ye jo c hota hai, this c square is becoming how much 1 by mu naught epsilon naught okay so after putting all this value so b square is coming here and after this uh, c square if you are putting then we are getting how much 1 by 4 b square by mu naught which is equal to ub and finally it is coming what right hand side so this is one of the one of what important question so uh, please remember this one note down okay i hope it is noted so let us proceed so therefore uh, we came to know that in an electromagnetic wave in an electromagnetic wave the average energy density <laughs> okay the average energy density of electric field is equal to the average energy density of what magnetic field so we can note that so total energy the average energy density in electric field and average density in the magnetic field both are equal so we can write ue plus ub so both if you are adding both are equal that means i want to show you that so total energy will be how much ue plus ub okay so in place of ue we can write this one in place of ub we can write this one so when you are writing what will happen because both are same just before we prove that one so finally if you want to express the total energy in the language of electric field you can express like this peak value <laughs> okay so if you want to express in the form of rms value you can express also this is your wish so then if you want okay no we want to express in the language of magnetic field then it is also in your hand so you can see here so this is one by and plus 1 by what 1 by <laughs> okay so total uh, you can see here both uh, electric field and magnetic field so then you can uh, write here if you express if you want to express in the language of magnetic field peak value and RS value of course these are the things we studied in the last class uh, this is one only one of the uh, recapitulation for you okay I think you have noted okay so I think you understood shall we proceed to the next topic Chalo.
<laughs> okay, you're right. Yeah. So you can see here. ये क्या है? Hey. <laughs> so this is yes, it is a cylinder. And मेरे पीछे क्या है? <laughs> okay, electromagnetic wave है. Yes. Yes. <clears throat> Okay, so this is uh, electromagnetic wave is moving and is entering inside to this cylinder. Okay, now what we'll find out? Okay, so we'll find out intensity of electromagnetic wave. Okay, so now you can see here the amount of energy, the amount of energy, total energy. Yes, okay, total energy, not that energy density, total energy. The total energy crossing to this surface. Yeh jo hai na, uh, this uh, cross surface. Yes, you can see. The energy crossing to uh, cross surface per unit time is known as uh, intensity of electromagnetic wave. Alright. So, then let us calculate total how much energy is crossing to the cross section. Alright. Yes. So, all of you know that this electromagnetic wave, this electromagnetic wave is moving with speed of kya? What is the speed? Yes. So, this is the speed of light. So, this electromagnetic wave is moving with what speed? Yes. So, nice. <laughs> okay. So, it is moving with the speed of light and what is the speed of light? This is what? 3 into 10 to the power 8 meter per second. Can you see? Dikhai de raha hai? Yes. Okay. Nice. Thank you. So, uh, with speed what? 3 into 10 to the power 8 meter per second. Now, suppose when it is touching to this cross section area, let us start the stopwatch and the stopwatch time let us consider t is equal to 0. Any objection? Yes. <laughs> okay. So, here we are uh, uh, counting time is 0. Suppose after t second. Nay, t nay. <laughs> delta t. Okay, very good. So, after delta t second, this energy, consa energy, electromagnetic wave. So, this electromagnetic wave, this electromagnetic wave will be reaching there. So then if this electromagnetic wave is traveling from here to there with speed c, so then what will be the distance? Sorry, you don't know. Okay, so then you know that. What do you know? Speed is equal to distance by time. Sorry, it's 9th class, 11th class. Yes. So then it will be with you forever and ever. Okay. Anyway, so then distance will be what? Chalo. Distance is equal to speed into time. <laughs> okay. So distance equal to speed into time. So then here's the distance. Can I consider this one as L? L? Yes. L is the length. So length is equal to what? Speed kya ho gaya? C and time is delta t and c delta t is the length any objection no objection so dekho either ho gaya length is equal to c into delta t now if i ask you volume what is volume volume is equal to in ninth class mein sikha tha yes volume is equal to area into length bhai mera pen nahi chal raha hai chal raha hai okay <laughs> so volume is equal to area into length then it's volume so next i want to show you kya picture so then, energy is traveling. Cylinder ke andar. Ye cylinder kyun rahe rahe hai? Ye for our convenient. Okay. Why were you taking cylinder? Because this is for our convenient. Now, so the energy content. Only content. Energy content. Yes. So the energy content in this cylinder crosses the area A in time. A T in delta T. Okay. Yes. So, in delta t, as the wave propagates with speed c. So, then the energy contained is the total energy. The total energy will be what? Average energy density into volume. So, then average energy density is u 
and this is its volume. Average energy density U, then you will ask me, sorry, average energy density to U hota tha, UE or UB. Mera sir hai, isi le nahi dekhai de raha hai, okay. <laughs> okay, so because of my head, you cannot see, abhi dekho. So, energy density, either we are writing as UE or UB, but you know, the energy density in the language of electric field is equal to energy density in the language of magnetic field just before we discussed. So, that is why I am writing U1. So, that is why don't be confused. So, U is energy density and volume is what? Samnehi. Yes. Okay. I hope it is clear now. <laughs> okay. All right. So, then now let us go to the next slide. So, next slide is on your screen now. Okay. Chalo. So, intensity of wave, Konsa wave, electromagnetic wave, intensity of wave is what? I, I stands for intensity, which is equal to energy, Konsa energy, total energy, yes. So, total energy and area and into time. So, then total energy U, so I am writing here, total energy, what is the energy? Average energy density. You want in electric field, chalo. Average energy density into volume. Volume what the length? C delta T into area. C delta T into area. Ye ho gaya? Total energy. This is total energy. Then divided by what? Area into time. A into T. So then what will happen to its future? Yes. So then area, area cancel. Ye delta T ho jayega. So, delta T, delta T cancel. Kya ho gaya mera pen? Yes. Thadhira chal raha hai. Anyway. So, then final uh, remaining is what? Average energy into C. So, then average energy if you want in the language of electric field, you can write like this and C is coming here. Or if you want to write in the form of RMS value, also it is your wish. So, average density in the language of electric field and C. Then if you want average density in the language of magnetic field, you can write like this. And this is also your wish. Okay. All right. It is in the form of average density. Just one minute. So now this is total energy. I mean, you can see here, just I want to show you once again. Here, what happened? Both electric field and magnetic field, both fields are going. That is a together, the total average energy. U stands for what? Total average energy. So, then total average energy is coming here. If you want to express in the language of electric field or if you wish to express in the magnetic field, then you can express. And this point are very important and you have to remember. All right. Okay. So, then... What will happen from uh, now we are going to discuss next session we will be discussing about previous years NEET and J questions and CBSE questions also and there we will be discuss, we'll applying this all formula for okay so now uh, we will go to the next slide yes the next slide is on your screen yes okay <laughs> so therefore Intensity of an electromagnetic wave, intensity of an electromagnetic wave is directly proportional to the square of the electric or magnetic field. Also, we can write the size of the electric or magnetic field of an electromagnetic wave is directly proportional to the square root of its intensity. Finally, the statement is in front of you. So, dear children, so these are the uh, basic level, board level concept you must remember. So, uh, you can make the necessary notes and the entire notes for this chapter I have given in the description. You can download, it is in the PDF form. You can download that one also. So, now slowly we will be moving what? Momentum of an electromagnetic wave. Sorry, momentum to particles ka hota hai, mass ka hota hai. But electromagnetic wave ka momentum, yes. Okay, so electromagnetic wave has also momentum because light shows both particle nature and wave nature, dual nature of light. Okay, 
so now what is momentum an electromagnetic wave transport linear momentum as it travels through space if an electromagnetic wave transfers the total energy u to a surface in time t then what will happen the total linear momentum delivered to a surface is t is equal to what u by c now that's a one point i forgot to tell you here you can see one question is coming what is the si unit of intensity what is the si unit of intensity you can see here energy by time it is coming what energy divided by time it is coming what and area is what square meter so what per square meter is the si unit for intensity of the wave okay i forgot that one so you can remember now where is my screen yes so momentum of an electromagnetic wave is what uh, uh, if total energy u total means both electric field and magnetic field if it is u and time t uh, it uh, covers then p is equal to u by c now your question will be there so then you want the uh, if you wish uh, this derivation i can but derivation generally if it's not coming so what i want to show you here so all of you know einstein's uh, mass energy relationship so total energy equal to mc square and uh, planck's constant the energy of photon e is equal to h into nu nu pasand nahi hai chalo e is equal to h into f yes f also frequency nu also frequency so in this relationship can we write mc square yes so these are the things we'll be learning in with the dual nature of radiation <laughs> okay nice so mc square equal to hf so then can i write uh, mc square which equal to h a frequency frequency is what all of you know uh, velocity is equal to what c c stands for velocity now yeah. velocity is equal to what wavelength into frequency if i ask you frequency then what you will be telling uh, c by lambda chalo yes so h f kya hai f is equal to c by lambda yes so then what will happen both side 1c 1c cancel so mc mc is what h by lambda okay so this is what momentum momentum is equal to what h by lambda okay so m is mass and c is velocity mass into velocity is what momentum momentum is what mass into velocity and uh, p is equal to h by lambda now let us come here so what i want to show here total energy total energy can i write you yes total energy e uh, u you can see there so total energy u is equal to h into instead of f can i write c by lambda yes so total energy is equal to h by lambda into c so total energy equal to h by lambda is p p into c then if you want p then how much it will be there total energy by c now i think the derivation in your hand of course nobody will be asking you derivation this is for your kind understanding so p is equal to u by c and you got the derivation okay yes so now okay i hope uh, all of you understood now some students uh, request came ke derivation of energy density okay so derivation of energy density one all right so uh, let us go for derivation of of course i explained in the last class you can see the previous video still if you wish i can explain you see in lc oscillation suppose one capacitor is there and this capacitor is connected to one inductor okay so this capacitor inductor capacitor okay so in capacitor what will happen this charge will be oscillating 
positive negative charge will be oscillating okay this story you know lc oscillation in capacitor the energy is stored in the form of electric field and in inductor the energy is stored in the form of magnetic field now let us consider capacitor if i ask so quickly i'm telling you please note down so if i ask you total energy of capacitor then you will say half cv square yes half and c stands for the capacitor of the capacitor then capacitance of a capacitor this parallel plate capacitor kitna hai mu naught into a by d and v v stands for potential difference which is equal to e into t and its whole square so which is equal to half epsilon naught a by d into e square dot d square so then final what will happen 1d 1d will be cancelled which is equal to half yes my screen is here i can see epsilon naught e square next area into distance so this is coming what total energy area into distance is becoming volume so u is equal to half epsilon naught e square into volume so this volume i will bring this side so i am writing here for your understanding so energy total energy per unit volume which is equal to half epsilon naught e square so then energy per unit volume since it in the language of electric field we can write u e is equal to half epsilon naught e square yes so this is the derivation i hope all of you understood now okay all right yes thank you so then similarly if you are going for what uh, magnetic field so magnetic field in the inductor yes so in inductor the energy stored where i will write circle up nahi next page chalo in inductor the energy stored in the form of magnetic field yes so half l i square a l kya hota hai and i kya hota hai yes so for that again we have to go for what moving charge and magnetism i don't want to take there i don't want to waste your time also so let me tell you half ye l is the inductance it is the inductance of an in, in, inductance of an inductor depends upon the geometric shape yes so mu not n square area of the cross section into length of the inductor and i ye i kya ho gaya so all of you know that where what do you know let me take you the previous screen ye jo inductor hai it is looking like an sol solenoid okay so solenoid let me draw here so solenoid ka magnetic field intensity kya hai b is equal to mu not ni so b is equal to mu not ni if i ask you i i for what current then what you will say it will be b by mu not into n now let us go to the next screen okay so instead of i can i write b by mu not n whole square yes so then finally let us go half uh, mu not n square as i a into l it will it, it will become volume so what will happen a into l i am writing in bracket so that you can understand it will become volume area into length now it is what b square by mu not square and n square now the fuse area is clearly visible in front of you okay so now n square n square cancel and one mu here mu square means one mu cancel now chalo proceed so then total energy mera samne hai yes so total energy is what half b square by b square by kya mu not b square by mu not and area into length i can write for you v o l u m e mera handwriting is not good don't mind all right so then what will happen so then same thing energy per unit volume v o l c h e half b square by mu not then it is coming what so energy density which is equal to half b square by mu not so this is your derivation and in front of your screen all right so now let us proceed to the yes screen is clean now now i will go for pressure exerted by electromagnetic wave listen 
see if since it has energy it will have also pressure so now what is pressure i have written here so when an electromagnetic wave falls on the surface yes okay so it exerts pressure on the surface and how to calculate the pressure i have written here this pressure is called radiation pressure remember this pressure is called radiation pressure and this radiation pressure for an electromagnetic wave of intensity i electromagnetic wave of intensity i is given by p is equal pressure pr only p means momentum pr pressure is equal to i by c and it is because of the radiation radiation pressure of the solar radiation the tails of the comets all of you know comets point away from the sun so this is the uh, reason i have mentioned here sometimes a question may come so i want to show you my previous slide kahan la kiya my previous ha yes so here you can see p means what momentum momentum is equal to u by c and here one more thing hmm. uh, intensity is equal to u into c so sometimes u into c and u by c so you should be very careful for that okay now where is my screen hmm hmm okay so pressure completed now so with that let us go to the next topic and the next slide is on your screen okay yes so okay so now we'll be discussing the important topic about properties of electromagnetic wave and remember properties of electromagnetic wave is coming is coming in your uh, uh, board examination cbs examination also this question is coming so now uh, uh, already we discussed this properties of electromagnetic wave in previous classes so quickly i want to show you the uh, topic uh, points you can note down quickly and the slide will be there in for uh, the notes i have given in the description so the, this is uh, first point that electromagnetic waves are produced by accelerated charge but they do not carry any charge so the direction of the oscillation of electric field and magnetic field perpendicular to each other and also the propagation and also perpendicular to the propagation next uh, the oscillation of electric field and magnetic field are both are in the same phase that is why the phase difference will be zero all the electromagnetic waves travel in the space with speed something and the derivation i have mentioned here and electromagnetic wave doesn't require any uh, material medium so it can travel in the space it doesn't require any uh, medium so then uh, okay and here one topic i have given refractive index it is coming in the optics chapter so similarly uh, the amplitude the amplitude ratio of electric field and magnetic field of an electromagnetic wave is coming what Uh, speed of light and i have mentioned here the electromagnetic waves carry energy as they are traveling in the space and both uh, total energy in the sum of electric field and magnetic field is mentioned here already we have discussed this one these are the properties now the momentum is what p is equal to u by c and electromagnetic wave doesn't deflected by any electric or magnetic field so electromagnetic wave the principle of superposition yes this is one of the important point and shows the properties of reflection refraction interference diffraction and polarization this all properties are shown by electromagnetic wave the electric field and the electric field of an electromagnetic wave is responsible for responsible for its optical effect because electric field and the peak value of electric field is greater than peak value of magnetic field all right now what we have learned till now uh, that uh, one by one let us recapitulate before going to the next topic so i want to show you one by one formulas so we studied about wave velocity c which is equal to nu into lambda nu stands for frequency then energy of photon is h into frequency Um, by what planck's constant uh, h is planck's constant speed of an electromagnetic wave in vacuum is what 
is mentioned here and speed of electromagnetic wave in any material medium is given here we have learned these things till now okay all right so for wave for a wave of frequency new this is not v this is new yes mistake okay. wavelength lambda and propagating on x direction remember if that wave is propagating on x direction frequency is new and wavelength lambda the equation of electric and magnetic field is very important equation of electric field and magnetic field you can see here electric field ka equation e naught sin k x omega t and k is what wave number and b is equal to what b naught uh, sin k x minus omega t and why we have given here minus sign because it is uh, propagating in the positive positive x direction yes it is propagating in the positive x direction if it is propagating the negative x direction we can give here minus sign in the case of uh, we can give plus sign in the case of minus okay so this is both uh, uh, equation of electric field and magnetic field and this is very important you can note down and questions are coming on this equation on remember so next the amplitude ratio of electric and magnetic field given here many times it is repeated and the propagation constant or wave number is what 2 pi by lambda or omega by c okay so uh, these are the things we studied and average energy density of electric field is mentioned here next average energy density of magnetic field is mentioned here and average density of total electromagnetic wave is given here in the language of electric field and in the language of magnetic field so these are the point we have discussed till now next momentum delivered by electromagnetic wave p is equal to u by c intensity of wave is what uh, mentioned here uh, i is equal to uh, i is equal to what u v into c similarly now what the units we have used this is also very important what are the units we are using in this chapter so unit used uh, all of you know for velocity we are using meter per second for wavelength we are using meter and for frequency we are using hertz for electric field volt per meter newton per coulomb <laughs> okay so then uh, for magnetic field intensity tesla and ye jo hai na yes okay energy density in the language of electric field magnetic field and average energy density this is what joule per cubic meter and intensity all of you know watt per square meter so these are the things we have discussed till now so now we have already reached almost all the last topic of this chapter we are going to uh, finish the chapter very soon so now the last topic is very important what the topic is coming yes so the topic is on the screen now where is yes this is what electromagnetic spectrum and you can see here i have designed this electromagnetic spectrum visible light ionizing non-ionizing i have mentioned everything very clearly you can see here now let us proceed electromagnetic spectrum this definition you must write i have given in the description also but still you must write that one the orderly distribution of magnet electromagnetic wave yes the orderly distribution of electromagnetic wave in accordance with their wavelength or frequency into distinct groups having widely differing properties is called electromagnetic spectrum okay and basically this electromagnetic spectrum has been classified into three broadly has been classified into three category one is uh, infrared another one is uh, visible next one is coming what ultraviolet again infrared some sub branches are there visible you know seven colors and ultraviolet also some sub branches are there so that we will see now uh, one by one uh, let us start to remember to remember uh, this electromagnetic wave the chronology what is called the order so i have uh, given here uh, one technique to remember a russian 
Russian magician introduced an unnatural that is printing mistake and very a, a Russian musician introduced and very unusual x-ray eye game you can remember if this sentence then here R stands for radio wave M stands for microwave and I stands for infrared this all are coming in infrared family yes I said some sub branches then this is visible light it is alone uh, it is one group because uh, here seven colors are there then ultraviolet x-ray and gamma ray generally we are uh, uh, defining this one in uv range this is uv this is ir okay now let us see uh, one by one what is their characteristic properties and how it is uh, 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 did i discovered <laughs> okay yes now very interesting first it is coming radio wave all of you know these are the electromagnetic wave with longest wavelength and minimum frequency yes longest wavelength and minimum frequency and wavelength range and their frequency and their source and uh, discovered by and their properties i have uh, mentioned here and you can note down and these are the things you should uh, maximum things you have to remember here and uh, of course and uh, this uh, radio waves uh, it is application uh, very important sometimes in the examination the question will come uh, radio, radio wave discovered by whom discovered by Marconi in 19 sorry 1895 and what is his properties uh, reflection and refraction and uh, maximum time uh, its application will be coming so then its application uh, radio waves are used in radio and TV television communication system and in a radio astronomy even in, in a radio wave also there are some sub branches are there like uh, am band uh, am band fm band tv band and mobile band so this band range i have given here you can you can remember uh, this range also okay now we can go for microwave after radio wave it is coming uh, microwave so microwaves are the electromagnetic wave having wavelength next similar to uh, radio waves and it is also uh, discovered by uh, Marconi and its properties I have mentioned here properties discovered by source and its range everything mentioned here and you can note down and you have to remember of course these things so generally uh, in lecture classes uh, teachers do not give uh, more importance uh, because it is nothing to remember the things only yes so next state is coming microwave its use is what it is uh, microwaves are used in radar system and aircraft uh, navigation so in long distance communication also for geostationary satellites uh, these uh, microwaves are used and finally in microwaves also these are used so you can uh, find out the application okay next it is coming yes what is happening yes <laughs> okay yes nice thank you so here it is coming infrared this infrared radiations very close to low frequency and long wavelength low frequency and long wavelength of visible spectrum okay infrared waves uh, produced uh, produce what heating effect this infrared waves they produce heating effect so they are also known as heat waves remember so these infrared waves are also known as heat wave or thermal radiation so the water molecules and uh, carbon dioxide yes and ns3 ammonium uh, molecules uh, present in different materials uh, these are readily observed infrared waves and increase the thermal motion hence the heat the heat of the materials and the surrounding also so this is uh, the detail about infrared waves and its uh, wavelength i have given here uh, frequency and it is discovered by whom it is discovered by william herschel in 1800 in 1800 uh, this infrared wave was discovered by William Herschel. So, what is its properties? Heating effect, deflection, refraction, diffraction, and 
propagation through fog that is a fog light or something it is coming its application now okay so let us uh, quickly go to the application of uh, infrared ray so the infrared ray waves are used in remote control of tv and vcr where is the remote control let me see once so it is used in uh, remote control of tv or vcr uh, the keypad of which it contains small infrared transmitters in this case for example see this is a remote controller and in this keypad a small amount of infrared i want to show you here is there and you can see this led and this led if you see naked eye it will not be uh, at the, when you press any button uh, no light will be visible in your empty eye but in front of camera see now you can see the light yes okay so uh, let me show you the camera yes you can see that lighting now when i press the button you can see the lighting yes thank you so what happens hmm. so this is also a, a, a greenhouse uh, it is used in greenhouse to keep the plants warm and uh, it is also used in photography and i have uh, okay so i have uh, written here its application you can note down its application and i have given in the description that pdf already given in the description you can note down that one so now let us go to the very interesting topic visible light because of what we can see what we can see we can see the colorful world okay nice so visible light it is the very small part of electromagnetic wave or electromagnetic spectrum towards which the human retina is sensitive the visible light emitted or reflected from bodies around us gives the information about the world all right so now its uh, range is given something source properties it is given uh, i have given here and i have given in the description also you can write and you can remember now its application and all of you know it has a wide range application it provides us the information about the world around us it can cause the chemical reaction also photosynthesis this that everything yes so the approximate wavelength range of light of different colors are given in the next page you can see now yes the page is in front of you now for example for violet color something and for indigo uh, blue green yellow orange red is completely given here uh, you can note down red the khaydera yes red <laughs> okay thank you so i have given here next topic is coming ultraviolet ray you can see uh, the application and use of ultraviolet ray and uh, this is one cartoon okay so and its wavelength is given here and it's discovered by ritter in uh, 1800 and its properties source i have given here you can note down so then use of ultraviolet light uh, for food food, preserva food preservation in the study of uh, invisible writing yes invisible writing fox and documents and fingerprints for fingerprints also we are using this ultraviolet light and the study of molecules okay uh, these things are I'm, i have given here you can uh, note down and you can write those next it is coming x-ray and all of you are familiar with <laughs> x-ray so here it is also electromagnetic wave and its description i have given here okay children so almost all the class is becoming very long i think you are feeling bored no problem but this chapter is very important and uh, interesting interest topics are going on in front of you and quickly i'm showing you uh, that x-ray and its wavelength and it is discovered by rotten in 1895 and its properties are given also here you can uh, pause the video and you can note down of course the 
detail I have given in the description you can write and it's use all of you know x-ray directly or indirectly all of you know there are two types of x-ray soft x-ray and hard x-ray and where it is used and all this detail I have given here you can uh, note down this one now finally it is coming gamma ray which is more dangerous <laughs> okay yes thank you so uh, this electromagnetic radiation is the highest frequency range and uh, lowest wavelength yes these are the most most penetrating <laughs> electromagnetic wave these are coming in radioactive element alpha beta gamma and alpha beta this uh, gamma is uh, what uh, more penetrating yes? right. okay thank you so its wavelength range i have given here and it is uh, the source is what and it is discovered by henry brockel 1896 all right and its properties also i have given here you can write and make your own notes so finally use of gamma ray gamma ray uses i have given here used in uh, uh, radiotherapy a manufacture of polythene from ethylene and the other other uses also i have given here you can you can make it a nice uh, uh, what you call notes you can make so okay finally we'll be discussing two three points about our atmosphere Earth atmosphere, you know, it is uh, it is covered by a blanket of uh, atmosphere. Our Earth is covered by a blanket of atmosphere, which protects us from uh, from different uh, harmful uh, radiation. So I have written here uh, the detail. It is maximum things you have to understand the concept here only. Now here there are four uh, uh, parts are there. Uh, one is coming uh, troposphere. All of you know troposphere, mesosphere, thermosphere, and ionosphere. So troposphere it is uh, extended up to 12 kilometer, and here only maximum this uh, water vapor, rainfall, these things, weather conditions, everything uh, is uh, happens here. And I have written the short detail about here. You can uh, make the notes. Next, it is coming uh, stratosphere. The layer extend from 12 kilometers to 50 kilometers and its uh, uses and uses <laughs> okay and the detail short detail about here i have given the ozone layer uh, also uh, found here i have uh, written here you can find out then next one is coming uh, mesosphere it extends from 50 kilometers to 80 kilometers this is called the upper boundary uh, and how it is protects us uh, you can see here and its uh, temperature something given here next ionosphere where it is found in ion uh, ionic uh, form here temperature something and it extend from uh, 80 kilometers to uh, 400 kilometers now you know uh, one uh, protecting guard is their ozone layer so from uh, our from space from sun <laughs> okay so there are something uh, harmful radiations are coming and ozone layers uh, protect us from this harmful uh, radiation so uh, ozone layer is our friend you can see and we have to protect our ozone layer so greenhouse effect this is the phenomenon which uh, keeps the earth surface warm at night and how it is uh, becoming warm uh, always get, stays warm i have mentioned here uh, kindly you can pause the video and make the notes next uh, importance of ozone layer of course i have mentioned here okay so uh, with that our class completed this chapter also completed almost all this was the last video and in the next class we'll be discussing about uh, uh, important questions from this chapter next we'll go for what uh, optics uh, ray optics uh, wave optics and continuous classes will be there so don't miss any class join the class and you can make the notes i have given in the description so goodbye, all the best, take care.